Hello and welcome to a special edition of Teaching Tech, celebrating one year with a Q&A for my viewers and my patrons. When I decided to start this channel in December last year, my aims were pretty low. I wanted to get 1,000 subscribers. I feel so, so fortunate to have just passed 26,000 and be well underway on a good future for this channel. I'll jump straight into it. I frequently get feedback saying my videos are concise, so I'll try and stay true to that for this one here. So I might paraphrase things a little bit, but I'll try and answer every question. JW200 asks a little bit about my personal life, my job, what I do besides YouTube, what I like doing in my free time, and Mr. 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 asks what I do outside of YouTube. Well, my full-time job is as a school teacher. I am the STEAM coordinator, science, technology, engineering, art, maths, and I teach primary school as well as high school. In terms of free time, I do love technology, so I'm always trying to look for new gadgets and I have a lot of hobbies around that type of thing, but I also love sport and I'm also a big sucker for motor racing and vehicles and things like that. I've got a track car that I drive way too little and I've also got the mobility scooter and drift trike, which I featured earlier in the year on this channel. And I've just got an electric go-kart, which you'll be seeing next year. In terms of family, I've been married to my wife for just over 14 years now, and we've got two kids. We've got a five-year-old boy and a seven-year-old girl. Ofek Oren kindly asked me, how are you doing? Well, I'm doing pretty good. I'm very happy with the success of the channel, but I'm also quite exhausted. Doing YouTube on top of my full-time job hasn't been very glamorous. It's been a lot of hard work, a lot of late nights. I've pretty much had to give up for a large part of the year any type of leisure time for myself and a lot of sleep. But you know what? It was probably worth it. I'm proud of what I've achieved and thankful to the community for accepting me. Daksh Malhotra asks, how long have I been 3D printing for? And does Sonic Boom asks, what was my first ever print? And what was my first non-practical print? Well, it makes sense to answer those at the same time. The very first time I 3D printed was in 2004. It was my last year of university and I did industrial design at UTS. And I know Angus from Makers Muse did the same degree from the same university, but I think he's a little bit younger than me. Anyway, the year that I graduated, the uni just got a brand new 3D printer in their workshop. I think it was worth about 80 grand and it was this enormous thing. And I think the quality was pretty comparable to what you can get from cheap printers from China these days. So it's amazing to see how far it's come. For my final year project, I designed a trolley and that was my first ever 3D print. In terms of my first ever 3D print at home, it was on a MakerBot replicator. I was setting it up for my school at the time and I'm pretty sure I printed a three-tone whistle, which is still an awesome print. And I would highly recommend printing it to show off 3D printing to other people. Kenneth LNOR asks, what's my useful print? It's in every video, even though you never see it. It's a clip-on diffuser for the lights I use while I'm filming. They're just garage workshop lights, but I wanted to do things on the cheap. So I printed up this design that holds a piece of paper and I use it in all of my videos. Finally, he mentions the MaxPod robot and yes, I will still be doing it. I've just been tweaking the tornado a bit as you've seen in recent videos and then I can be full steam ahead with printing the parts for that to feature in a video. Tyler Page asks, what got me into 3D printing and YouTube and where do I see my future? Well, I actually had two channels before this that were related to my school. I never had my face on them. There were tutorial videos I did for my students and without any promotion, they both steadily grew. So I thought I would have a red hot crack at this and do it properly and it's worked out really well. So I'm pleased with that. Future Wiles, I'll continue to try and grow the channel as much as I can. And it would be pretty cool if I could maybe do it full time in the distant future, who knows? Majorian says, your most popular videos are about Ender 3. Well, I can't really deny that. And Ender 3 has been good for my channel, but it's also been good for 3D printing in general. It's been an excellent gateway printer. And as far as I can tell, it's got a lot of new users into 3D printing. So if I can make videos to help those people out, that's really rewarding for me. Cooper Stuckel, one of my patrons, says CR10S Pro on paper, worth $600, better than the Prusa for the money. Well, I've got one in the mail courtesy of Banggood, so I don't want to speculate before it arrives, but I will be reviewing that in the near future. Malicious Goozy says, what do I think of the Trevo Flash? They were going to send me one after I reviewed the Tornado, but the line went cold. Not sure what's happening there, Tebow. From all reports from what I've seen, it seems to be a pretty popular and capable printer. TechnoGeek3D asks, what do I prefer out of the GTEC A10 and the Ender 3 and why? Well, I haven't reviewed the normal GTEC A10, but it seems to be a clone of the Ender 3. Not sure if it really offers anything different. The A10M, of course, I've reviewed. And if you're an experienced 3D printer, I'd probably get that one over the Ender 3. That leads me to Lee Abernathy asking, what are your thoughts on the A10M? 
Do you think a soluble support with PLA would be possible? Well, I'm not gonna guess on that one. I've got some in the cupboard that I recently got from my filament sponsor, X3D. So I'll be testing that out with PLA. Also planning to try some hybrids of PETG as well as TPU to see if I can get some semi-flex and rigid prints as well. Jay's 3D Adventure asks a real doozy. Would you still buy Simplify 3D today given the updates to other slices and the lack of S3D updates? Now I've toyed with doing a video on whether S3D is worth it because it's one question that comes up over and over and over in forums and community groups. The truth is it's hard for me to be unbiased here because I've been using it since pretty much when it came out. So I've grown used to it and I've become dependent on it. When I look at Cura, I don't understand the settings as well as other people do because the layout and the philosophy is a little bit different. Having said that, I probably still would. I don't mind spending money on my hobbies and I'll probably justify it as some way to maximize all the other printers that I have. I have some questions from my patrons, Raylene Regent and Edgar Rivas. They both ask questions to do with Marlin and to address those questions specifically, I think I'd like to do a video in the future just explaining how Marlin works, the difference between vanilla, TH3D, things like that. If you think that would be good, please comment below. Keith Payne, also one of my patrons, says he is new to the 3D printing world. He would like a guide on conversion from SDL to G-code. Very early on, I made a basic slicing video, but I think I'd like to revisit that and do it better. Again, if you think it's a good idea, please comment down below. Carsten asks, what's the recommended way to unclog an Ender 3 extruder or hot end? Back in the day when I just printed ABS, you could unscrew it and then soak it in acetone. If it's really, really clogged, these days I unscrew it and I hit it with a blowtorch. And if you get it just so it glows cherry red, by the time it cools down, all of the PLA or whatever other filament would be vaporized. For a less dramatic solution, I would recommend getting one of those little guitar strings, poking it up from underneath. Mitka also suggests in response to that that you can use cleaning filament, something I haven't personally used, but I might look into in future. KB asks, procedure for a cold pull on a micro Swiss or metal hot end, please. Well, I don't have to do cold pulls very often. I seem to be pretty lucky with not having hot end clogs, but I have noticed when I'm doing normal unloading that it's hard to pull out, but if I heat it up, push it further in, just a mil or so, and then pull out, it comes really freely. So if you're having trouble with cold pulls, maybe that's something you can experiment with. Fishy-san asked me a very specific question about Cura versus Simplify 3D for calibrating an extruder. And he's talking about when you do a single wall cube, the differences where Cura uses a measurement in millimeters for the thickness of your perimeters, whereas other slices like Simplify 3D use an amount of perimeters and assign a width to that. Answer is it doesn't really matter as long as you're able to match one to the other. But I should say that all of this is theoretical. You should always do your final adjustment of the flow rate by the prints in front of you. So if they look like they're over extruded, lower it a bit more and vice versa. One of my patrons, Spike, talks about success with the Kinevo heated bed upgrade. He says it uses main voltage and I assume it's like the one on my Tornado where it heats up really quick. If you think you'd like me to cover this, please comment below. A name that I'm too ignorant to pronounce says, what's the difference between a metal extruder and the EZR extruder on the end of three? As far as I know, the metal ones that I think you're talking about is pretty much a copy of the factory parts, which some people have trouble with them wearing or snapping. So it's just gonna be a little bit more robust, but I don't think the functionality really changes. Maybe they're a little bit easier to grab. The EZR extruder has a more optimized filament path, so it's easier to load and unload, and that means it's also better at printing flexibles. George Pina asks, what's my experience of using stepper motor dampers and the extra heater? Do you need any extra cooling? Well, when I tested it in my video, I found that the differences were negligible and I've never seen on several printers that I run them with any degradation over time, even on long prints. The only time I've ever fitted a heat sink to a stepper motor was today. I was getting a bit of heat creep on the Titan Aero on my Tornado. I put a bit of thermal compound on the back of the stepper motor and did two of the screws and bolted on a spare heat sink that I had. L3D 3D Maker talks about one millimeter drill bit. Well, I've got a 0.8 on my Tornado and I'm pretty happy with that. Check out those videos. He asked a series of other questions. Don't have time to do them all, but one is on designing and printing gears. I've done that successfully a few times. On Shape, my choice of CAD has plugins that you can get from the community and one of them is for Involute gears and that works really well. I've CNC'd and 3D printed and they generally mesh and work exactly how they're meant to. Lil Fred asks, what's my favorite Ender 3 mod? Probably BL Touch. 3D printing for me needs to be as convenient as possible. As much as I enjoy modifying printers, when I'm actually doing a project, I just want to click and print and know that it's going to be reliable and the part's going to turn out. 
Therefore, auto bed leveling is always one of the first things I do to a printer because it just makes it so much more user friendly and eliminates having to re-level the bed, even though once you're pretty good at it, that's a pretty fast process. Tom Gray asks, have I tried rail mods on any printer? No, I haven't yet, but I'll probably will in 2019. He asks how to take care of the wheels on the end of three. I would make sure that they're not too tight, otherwise you're gonna put grooves in them and probably removing the dust from time to time would be useful as well. He also asked how to tell for sure if the heat base on the end of three is warped. I like to put a steel rule on its side, on it with a light behind, and then you can look through and you should see whether the amount of light coming through the gap is the same or whether it fluctuates from it being warped. 1597KX680F, as well as Ball Cuba, ask about TPU filament. Do I dry it out? I don't, haven't felt the need to so far and things to do with it because it's got some left over. Look, I don't use it a great deal myself. Every now and again, you'll get a print where it's the only thing that's gonna work. Maybe something that needs to fit snugly, but it's not possible to slide it on and off without it being two parts. TPU is excellent for those type of things. Finally, Joe Jacob asks, how many years, if at all, do you think it will be before 3D printing is reliable enough to be in virtually every home as a true plug and play device? Will it be filament type printer or resin based? That's a great question. I think probably 10 years ago, people were predicting that people would have 3D printers in their house and they will be printing all sorts of things instead of going to the shops. But as we know, 3D printers, while becoming a lot more user-friendly, are still definitely in the realm of tinkerers. The average person probably could learn the skills to keep one running, but it's probably considered too specialized and finicky for the majority of people. In recent years, a lot of new 3D printers have been in a race to the bottom to outdo their competitors and be as cheap as possible. I think if it's gonna be in every house, it needs a slightly different approach. It needs to be on repeatability, reliability, and offering features that make it more foolproof for people at home. Whether that's a filament cartridge that the average person just plugs straight in, or whether that's powder like toner ink on a laser printer that a cartridge goes in, it's gonna be something along those lines. How long will it be? Probably still quite a few years away. That's all the questions and if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. We've got plenty of big things coming in 2019, lots of printer reviews, modification guides, projects, all sorts of stuff. I hope you had a Merry Christmas and I wish you a very safe and happy new year and I'll see you in 2019. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.